Welcome everybody to another edition of Frank's Amazing Podcast. I am your host Frank Gino. Merry Christmas Eve and it is a great Christmas present for the New York Mets as they have signed Dellen Batantis. It doesn't feel real. It feels like a Christmas miracle because this is a guy that not only myself but just about every other Mets fan has been begging the team to sign. We know that the Mets' main problem last season was the bullpen. And Dylan Batances is the guy who really stood out. And one of the reasons for that was his experience in New York. He is a familiar face. He's a guy that we have seen be a four-time All-Star with the Yankees from 2014 through 2017. Batances was an All-Star every single year. And you just don't get those guys like it's nothing. And... To be honest with you, I was getting pretty concerned with the way the Mets were just letting relievers slip away and, you know, Blake Trinan would get signed or another player would be off the market. And then it's like, who are the Mets going to get if players are signing constantly? And then all of a sudden you see the report that Dylan Batanz is only looking for one year, 10 million. To me, it made no sense how the Mets couldn't make this move. Like, it was such a no-brainer. You don't have to make a long-term commitment, and you really don't have to give up that much money. $10 million, all of a sudden is becoming a base salary, mostly for relievers, but just a lot of positions in general. You think of the kind of contract that Jed Lowry has right now, the kind of contract Todd Frazier had last season. $10 million just seems like the number that is being thrown out there a lot. And it's the number that the Mets are probably going to use for the Dylan Batanza signing. The numbers haven't come out quite yet. But still, it's like there is good and bad to this move. I understand it. It's not automatic. You know, the Mets bullpen is going to be locked down. They found their late inning guy. They're going to have one of the best bullpens in the league. Not saying that. But it's just the really important thing about Batanza. It's very similar to the Michael Walker and Rick Porcello signing. The Mets don't have any bullpen depth to begin with, and their bullpen wasn't even good. But the other problem was that, like, you could talk about Lugo and Gazelman and Familia and Diaz and Justin Wilson. That's great and all. But then who are the other guys? You're talking about the Paul Seawald and the Drew Gagnon and Daniel Zamora. You know, these minor league type relievers, not necessarily those names, but pitchers of that caliber. Those guys are not going to get it done. And unfortunately, with the way baseball is, those guys were going to get a whole lot of appearances. So instead of using those guys, you you have a Batanzas now, and now you could slide people down a roll. So instead of using one of those minor league relievers, now you could use Gazelle. And he goes into a much more low leverage role. And I think that's really important for somebody like Gazelle, who has been inconsistent has not proven that he is a true lockdown reliever, a reliable guy that you could go to. And I just think it gives the Mets a lot more options, which they are going to need. Because another thing that is really important that nobody has talked about, but I think this is going to be a big thing with Batances, three batter minimum. All of a sudden, lefty specialists don't have much of a value anymore. So Luis Avilan, he's not going to be on this team anymore. Not that he was because he's a free agent, but still it's like, you don't really have much interest in Avilon because he's a one batter type pitcher, whereas Dylan Batantis could give you an inning or more. So with these new rules of the three batter minimum, Dylan Batantis is going to have so much more value to this New York Mets team. So I am definitely very excited about this. Now, we know Dylan Batantis tore his Achilles last season. That is not an easy injury to come back from. I fully understand that. But still, it's like with the way the Mets bullpen has been, not only this year, but in years past. I go back to it all the time, but to me, the World Series, the bullpen was not good enough. You think of the leads that Familia gave up or the games that Tyler Clippard blew. Like, the Mets bullpen was good enough. And again, they didn't have that depth. You'll have a couple good pitchers here and there, but then when you go further on down the bullpen, you don't really have reliable arms that you could go to. So I think, again, Batanzas is going to help with that. The other thing that is a concern about Dylan Batanzas is the age. He is now 31. He is getting up there. And his best years are behind him. Now, don't think he's going to be an all-star ever again. That's going to be tough to do unless he remodels himself and what have you. And the other thing about Batanz is that kind of like a Familia and like a Diaz, he does have the tendency to have command and control that is out of control. And there are times where you'll see Batanz is throwing the ball all over and he doesn't look like a good reliever because you can't really count on him. You don't know which Batanz you're going to get. But... 
when Batances is on, he is on. And he is a guy that really, he could come in there, score this inning, let's move on. And I just think with this starting rotation, if you could have Jacob DeGrom give you a really good performance, six innings, seven innings, then you go to Batances, then you have options. Then you can go Seth Lugo, you can go Justin Wilson. If, I mean, this is a really big if, we always talk about ifs, but if Familia or Diaz is good, even just one of them, all of a sudden, the Mets, the blueprint for winning a game looks much easier. And I, I just think that now that you have Patances and we have this idea, maybe Marco Waka is in the bullpen, maybe he's starting. There's more to be done. I think that is the other very exciting thing about this Batanza signing is that we know the Mets have more up their sleeve, whether that's trading a starting pitcher, whether it's Steven Matz, Marcus Stroman, Noah Syndergaard. Uh, I don't know who it's going to be, but I do believe that they're going to trade a starting pitcher to make the Rick Porcello thing work, make the Michael Waka thing work. But all of a sudden, this team looks a lot different. It's only one signing, but... I hope, this is another thing on the Christmas wish list, that it adds on to more moves that the Mets are going to pursue. That does not include trading J.D. Davis. That does not include trading Jeff McNeil. Dom Smith, I'm willing to part with him for a bullpen arm. I really think he does not serve much of a value on this team. But the Mets also have to decide, what are they going to do with Jed Lowry? There is no room for him either, and that's a big salary number. I don't know who they're going to attach to this, but... The most important thing about this Batanza signing is the way it happened. And the way it happened was the Yoannis Cespedes contract settlement. The Mets now having this much money to spend. We see the report that as of right now, Cespedes base salary could be $6 million compared to the $29 million originally. I just think that all that money that the Mets were able to free up, that is definitely the way they were able to sign Batanzas. Because before the Cespedes settlement, and after the Michael Walker and Rick Porcello signings, the Mets were right up at the luxury tax, which really didn't make sense when you think of Cespedes' contract and David Wright's contract and just the way the money is being allocated to the roster. So that is definitely a big deal. And if they could free up more money with a Jed Lowry or even they do want to trade Cespedes, there's nothing wrong with that. But I do think he'll give you a really good season. And I feel like if Cespedes is healthy, which I really feel like he's going to be, I'm going to say Cespedes is going to be healthy because of now how much incentive he has to play and play well because now all of his money is going to be off roster bonuses and incentives. And also the thing about U.S. Cespedes, he needs to play for another contract. He wants to continue his major league career. So the Mets are going to get the best possible version out of Cespedes. So I think that if he has a really good season and maybe uh, McNeil's doing well and J.D. Davis doing well, Brandon Nimmo, Michael Conforto, now you have a lot of really good outfits and then you could trade one of them. I'd hope it's not Nimmo because I personally like him. But you could trade a Conforto or you could trade, unfortunately, a J.D. Davis. You could trade Cespedes. And if you see that there's another area that you're struggling, maybe Rosario does doesn't do well or maybe he gets hurt maybe catcher Ramos is regressing or gets hurt a lot of things are going to happen during the major league season maybe Rick Purcell isn't good maybe Noah Syndergaard isn't consistent again maybe Marcus Stroman got hurt a lot of different things could happen so if you hang on to Cespedes come trade deadline time a team really needs him you could trade Cespedes and try to find a way to fill in for that need that you may have as the season progresses maybe you need more bullpen help you never know what's going to happen during the course of a major league season. But I think the good thing in the Mets' favor is that, you know, Batances, he's also a local guy, so that's nice. But he comes from the Yankees, and the Yankees didn't want to resign him. We know the Yankees have one of the best bullpens, maybe the best bullpen in all of baseball. So they didn't really have much of a need for Batances anymore. And he's a guy that grew up in their farm system. And you know what? He could pitch with a chip on his shoulder, and he could want to stick it to the Yankees and decide to perform really well for the Mets. And obviously, that would help them. But Slimmer to Cespedes, I really imagine that this Batanzas thing is going to be a one-year deal. And if it is, the good thing for the Mets is that they know that Batanzas is going to be trying really hard because he wants a long-term contract as well. So when you have Porcello on the one-year deal, you have Michael Waka on the one-year deal with incentives to get the money higher. Cespedes is playing for incentives. Dylan Batanzas is playing for a new contract. When you have this, you have a lot of guys motivated and wanting to win. And you don't need any motivation for Alonzo or McNeil or DeGrom or J.D. Davis or Brandon Nimmo, Michael Conforto. These young guys, they want to win. They're going to be trying really hard. The other thing they have to figure out is what the heck they're going to do with Robinson Cano. I mean, that's another Christmas miracle if they can make anything happen with there, whether it's cutting him, 
trading him. I, I don't care what you do. So the good news is that there's still other work to be done and that the Mets have at least done something to address the bullpen because even though they got Jake Marisnik and they got Purcell and they got Walker, they hadn't done a single thing to improve their bullpen. And this whole excuse that Brody was using saying, oh, well, we signed Walker and Purcell. That means that Lugo and Gazelle would get to go to the bullpen when they were ready in the bullpen to begin with. How have you improved? How have you shown the fan base that an area that you struggled last year is going to be an area that you're going to be better at? And like I said with the whole idea of training something, if something that worked last year is now a problem this year, at least you can work on that because you have more assets. You can make more things happen. So I really, really like the Potanza signing. I'm very excited about it. And you have to hope that it works because you know what? I was extremely excited when the Mets got Edwin Diaz. I thought they got one of the best closers in baseball. He was going to be locked down, helped this team a lot. Didn't happen. Maybe things change this year. I won't count on it. But for Batances, you can only hope that he's going to be better and that the Mets, they will have a better record and they're going to need to be because the division has improved. The Braves have made a lot of moves. I mean, having Will Smith go off the board right away, that was a big problem for the Mets and a boost for the Braves. And that's in your division. So that doesn't look good. I still feel like the Nationals have something cooking. I hope they don't sign Josh Donaldson because then the whole idea of having Rendon go to the Angels, it really would defeat the purpose if they still have a really good third baseman that absolutely killed the Mets last season. I mean, Josh Donaldson had so many home runs against the Mets last year, double-digit home runs. He definitely was a thorn in their side. But you've seen these other teams, if you think the Phillies getting Zach Wheeler and Didi Gregorius and signing Joe Girardi as their manager. So it's definitely going to be interesting and at least. And I'm excited to see what else the Mets do. I really feel that there is more coming. I just get that feeling because now the roster, it definitely looks weird. And there are moves that can be made that can improve this team and don't have to cost you a lot of money. I think that is the most important part. Because you can say, oh, well, you know, the Mets still have money to spend. And you know they're not going to spend it under the current ownership. We can only hope that things will change once Cohen is in charge. But because you could trade Cespedes and trade Jed Lowry and trade Dom Smith and not have to really add on any money, I don't know if Sterling Marte is next. And the other thing, real quick before I go, what in the heck is going on with all these Nolan Arenado and Francisco Lindor rumors? I don't know what that's about, but I'm here to tell you that is not going to happen. Whoever is writing these stories, they really have got to stop because the Mets don't have anything that could, they could give the Rockies or the Indians that's going to get them Arenado or Lindor. Nor would they ever, ever take on Nolan Arenado's contract with the current ownership. That is not happening. And even for Lindor, I mean, that's a short-term investment. So I don't think anything's going to happen there. I wouldn't put so much focus on that. I'm more focused on what's going to be going on with the starting rotation. I think there is something big happening there. Whether it's an improvement or not, I just think that somebody is leaving. And we'll see if they could address all the errors with it. Could they bring in some prospects? Because this farm system is not very good. And I'm pretty afraid to see what happens in the future. I know we're in win-now mode. So let's win. Thank you for getting Dylan Patances. Let's go Mets and Merry Christmas everyone. See you in the next one.